When I was 13, my mom and dad let me go trick-or-treating for the first time without any supervision. All these years later, I can still remember how psyched I was that I was allowed out on my own for the first time. But little did I know, it would prove to be my first and last time trick-or-treating on my own. So at around 5.30, me and a few of my middle school buddies all got together and started walking from house to house. But we were faced with something of a problem. Some of the fancier houses, the ones with spookier decor, were so jammed up with kids that some had literal lines forming down the driveways. So, not wanting to line up for our candy, we figured we'd be smart and knock on the houses that no one else was knocking at. This was not a smart idea for obvious reasons, as the houses with no decorations sometimes just tell you to get lost or pretend not to be home at all. Anyway, we knock on this one house and instead of getting some grouchy grown-ups, some kid the same age as us answers the door. We didn't recognize him from school or from hanging around the neighborhood, so we're kind of confused like, trick or treat? All before the kid just slams the door in our face. Feeling suitably rejected, a few of us go to just walk back down the driveway, but one of my friends is like, nah, screw this kid, and knocks on the door again. The kid answers and my buddy sings, trick or treat, before striking this dumb pose as if to be like, screw you. The kid then absolutely explodes and screams like, you knock on my house again and I'll kill you, before slamming the door again. Again, most of us are like, dude, let's just go. But this one friend of mine is basically like, oh, it's on. Shoves his finger into the house's doorbell and keeps it there, resulting in this long, solid burr sound. Even over the buzzer, you could hear the kid running back towards the door from the other side. Only this time when he opens it up, he has this huge, gnarly looking blade in his hand, like a sacrificial dagger in design, but at least the length of his forearm. As soon as we see it, we just bolt up the driveway and out into the street, but I kid you not, this kid follows us. We managed to maintain a steady distance between us as we ran, and the kid wasn't all that fast of a runner. But in all of our dumb costumes, we couldn't run as fast as normal, so we're in serious danger of maybe tripping, falling, or just slowing down enough for this psycho knife kid to catch up to us. I think the worst part was when we saw some lady taking out some trash and we ran to her for help. She just looked at us like we were playing a prank. And then when she saw the knife, she just bolts back indoors too. I swear to God, that was the worst feeling thinking, my God, no one's going to help us. Then, I remember seeing the fastest of us like swerving over to some house on one side of the street where we were running down. Then, only when I got a little closer did I realize he was bolting into an open garage. We all follow and we manage to pull the manual door down just in time to shut out the knife kid, then starts kicking the garage door. This summons the homeowner into the garage who's obviously like, what are you doing here? But once we explain the situation, the guy runs off to call the cops. We're still in the garage, shaking and panting, still terrified the kid is going to break into the guy's home somehow. But the next time the homeowner reappeared in the garage, he has his cell phone in one hand and a gun in the other. Only then did I actually start to feel safe. Like I'm not even a gun guy or anything like that, but I saw that thing and just thought, okay, if the kid gets in, he's done. And in the moment, that actually calmed me down. Kind of scary that it did, but we move on. Anyways, the cops showed up pretty quick which meant we had the pleasure of watching that stupid psycho get slammed into the pavement. Kind of a sad story in a way because we heard the kid was super neglected by his parents and that he had a bunch of mental problems too. His parents used to leave him alone for weeks at a time because they traveled a bunch for work. Kind of like if Kevin from Home Alone had just suddenly lost his mind or something. I feel for the kid in a way, but honestly, he was lucky he didn't get shot either by the homeowner or by the cops. And we all hate that kid to this day because, after that, we weren't allowed to go trick-or-treating until we were way too old for it anyway.